Hello to you all and welcome to the Alton Towers Project Horizon Challenge results video. Yes, I know the challenge ended almost a month ago and I've only just made this video, but it's taken me a lot of time. Okay. If you're unsure of what this competition was, then let's go through a bit of a summary. So pretty much this park right here, this exact park, I'm on the real thing. It was given in a download link for you guys to go and download it and build whatever the hell you want. And this is the Project Horizon building that they're going to be using for their brand new roller coaster when it opens in 2025. So I gave this map over to you guys to build your ride. And I ended up getting 120 plus submissions come back to me, which is crazy. Thank you so much to anyone who entered. Lo and behold, I did look through every single one. That's why it took me so long. And they were all amazing. So thank you so much once again for participating. But in this video, I of course can't go through 120 submissions because I'd be here for uh, not even millenniums this time, millions of years so instead today i've condensed it down to a top 20 and i'm going to go through them all in this video and here's how this video will work to lay out this video of course i will be counting down from number 20 all the way to first place the person who will win the 50 pounds and the mystery theme park gift box from number 20 all the way down to number 16 i'll be giving five to ten seconds of coverage with a little bit of the pov and some off-ride shots from number 15 down to 11 there'll be 10 to 20 seconds of coverage again with a little bit of the pov and some more off-ride shots and as we reach the top 10 from number 10 all the way down to six there will be 20 to 30 seconds of coverage even more with more of an overview on the entire area and the main coaster inside and of course like all of these competition result videos there'll be a full walkthrough for the entire top five the time has come best of luck to everyone who entered here we go at number 20, we have the House of the Rising Sun by the Red Hawk 13. This is a B&M wing coaster that features six inversions and a lot of temple-esque theming. At number 19, we have Planet X by Fire Breather. This is a multi-launch roller coaster situated on another planet, and it's really well themed. At number 18, we have Curse of Wadget by Lee Master 53. This is the first of quite a few console edition builds, and is a triple launch roller coaster located within an ancient burial site. At number 17, we have yet another console edition build. Walking Dead Armageddon by Luke1699. This is a very heavily themed zombie infested roller coaster based on the Walking Dead TV series. At number 16, we have Temple Dash by Hollow MM. This is a launch wing coaster with a storyline surrounding the awoken and enraged spirits within the building. And at number 15, we're into the top one. Five. We have Forbidden Temple by Tricky2906 slash Dodo. This is a console edition dark ride that features a really cool exterior, a pre-show within the queue line, and a very storyline driven dark ride experience inside. It is seriously well themed. At number 14, we have Voltron by Spacey Cascade 736. This is a swinging mine train coaster with multiple launches, even including a shuttle launch element halfway through the ride, where you stop on the launch track, launch backwards, and launch straight back through again. The ride also has some really Really good show scenes throughout. At number 13, we have Tower's Temple by Coaster 23. This is a water coaster with tons of animatronics, lighting, and effects within an immersive temple building. This one was built on the console edition, and like the last ride, it has many show scenes, whereas this time, you get absolutely excited. At number 12, we have Expedition Cretaceous by M. Pallison 64. This is quite a realistic swinging mine train coaster that'd be perfect for families and for Alton Towers. As you ride along various twists and turns, as you discover what lies within the Horizon Temple. At number 11, we have Runaway Mine Train by Andy. Yes, I know what you're thinking. Surely with that name, you're taking the mick. But this build is the furthest from that. It's a heavily themed underground mine experience in which genuinely makes you feel like you've ventured into the mines beneath Alton Towers. Not that there is any. At number 10 now, we are in to the top 10. Beautiful stuff. We have Goldfield Ghosts by Niels Bear. This is apparently the world's fastest indoor roller coaster, and you're sent down into the mines to investigate the strange happenings down there. You go through various launches and even a vertical lift hill and beyond vertical drop. It's a full experience underground, and you can definitely see the paranormal activity whilst down there. The ride itself is very smooth and it's extremely realistic, especially with all the elements that it packs in. It's very cool. At number nine, we have Altonville Mine Tours by Thrill Riders. This is a swinging mine train coaster with multiple launches and lots of unique elements such as this upwards launch here and even a fake track section where you feel like you're going to go one way but then you turn the other. The station along with the whole ride is incredibly well themed and the coaster itself is very smooth. It's also very realistic and I could definitely see Towers building something like this in the future. Or if they wanted to, they could even name a maze at the park after it. At number eight, this is a really unique one, probably the most unique on this list. Project Illusion by Coaster Extra. Not only is the outside very different to most, 
gorgeous, but the inside is completely unique to anything I've ever seen in the game, really. The ride obviously isn't very realistic, but my god, on ride, you lose where you're going so quickly. It's a Mac Extreme spinning coaster with multiple launches, and the rooms inside are made to look like illusions hence the name. It's a somewhat smooth coaster and it has a lot packed into it and it's also very disorientating. Amazing stuff. At number seven is The Last Ride by Static Boris. Funnily enough, this was the last one that got submitted for this competition, so 10 out of 10 on the name there. This is what appears to be a Gerslauer launch coaster and the theme is quite dark. It's themed to the journey into the afterlife. But nonetheless, it's a very unique coaster with lots of really cool elements and it's very smooth whilst you ride it. And the way this ride is presented is on such a grand scale with a lot of the ride actually being situated in a massive cave for quite a big portion of it. It is honestly a brilliant coaster. At number six, the entry just before the top five, we have Mine Trove by Sean. This is the UK's first SNS access coaster where you embark on a mission to find the treasure trove of gold. The ride has many unique elements, including a drop track. It is really well themed and once again, it's situated in this massive underground cave. The ride itself is very smooth, enjoyable and it even has a pre-show all round a very good coaster that was so close to making it to the top five and we have made it to the top five and if you got this far then first of all thank you so much for watching to this point and second of all if you did submit a creation you'll know at the bottom of the submission sheet there was a poll asking whether you'd like to see another competition sometime in the future and to help towards that opinion please like this video if you want to see another competition later down the line i would love to do another one that's if you guys want to see it. It's now time to go through the top five. So at number five, we have Peter Rabbit's Joyride by Swazzy. This is a Intamin multi-dimensional coaster themed to Peter Rabbit, if you hadn't guessed it. Let me enter through the entrance. Here we go. All custom queue, custom flooring as well. Crazy. Genuinely, the amount of time some people have put into these things is mental. As you head around the queue line, there's various different set pieces, such as this massive house here and even a greenhouse and a well very cool and with that being said we head into the building we got some doors closed here but we'll, we'll we'll just crash through them and i believe these are three separate pre-show rooms there you go massive pre-show room here and then i'm pretty sure all of them are the same yeah there you go and then there's one down there too these are very cool you got the little circles that you're supposed to stand on i don't think there is any video or audio to do with this but this is a really cool idea we come through to the main station area look at this this looks very nice. And as much as it's an IP, it doesn't seem heavily influenced by the IP with it like plastered absolutely everywhere like Merlin usually do. So with Intamin multi-dimensional coasters, they are practically impossible to make in this game. So there will be a few elements on this that may not look correct, but they have realistic intentions. So here we go, we're in the first room, which once again, really unique here. You've got some clouds on the side and it's very cartoony the top speed of this coaster is 40 miles an hour so it's a very family driven ride and here we go perfect timing around here some really nice foliage and terrain all the way through i genuinely just love the experience of this ride and we all oh, we go through some doors and here we go here's the first little element that's almost a shuttle element where we go up a spike and fall backwards into another section of the ride here, which this bit would be backwards, but Planet Coaster's so bad that you can't do that. We continue banking around and we go into a turntable, I believe this is, which again, Planet Coaster, you're bad. And then we head into, what is this? A cinema. We're in a cinema. Is there a screen behind us? I can't see. Oh, well, here we go. Whoa, look at this. This is a massive set. Loads of cars and the road, loads of different buildings, and it clearly is sunset. But the track has also changed colour too. Through a building there, that was really cool. And also, this ride is really smooth. And then we go into the brake run. That brake run was a little bit wobbly wobbly, but before we go elsewhere, I really want to see this ride. Oh my god, that opened perfectly. I really want to see this ride from above. So this room, first of all, you've got a really nice water feature there. And again... As I said, looks very cartoony. Then we crash through these doors here and go into the spike again. Really well themed. I love the stars around the place as well. And then the switch track would obviously send you this way in real life. You'd be going through all of this backwards and then eventually hit this turntable in this very derelict looking building. Got a little effect over there as well. Some, some lightning, sure thing. Then we head into the cinema room. This is so cool. We head into the main city, which just looks 
I, I can't even this is such a unique concept and it just looks really good and with this mostly being a family ride experience it would be the perfect fit for that corner of the park but once again a ride that doesn't have too much theming on the outside with the building but in the queue line and inside makes up for it completely at number four we have lost city by demodex 101 um, as you can see i'm not starting at the entrance this time because there is a lot to look at in this entire area. So this ride is apparently based on the discovery of an ancient Arabian city which appears to be abandoned. So we're basically going to get taken on a minecart into the depths and it's just, just going to discover what's down there. But as you can see, we enter into this area and it's already really well themed. We've got some banners hanging down there on this bridge. I mean, this already looks incredible. Also, there's a flat ride over here, which I know a lot of people did add flat rides and other bits of theming outside of the building. Of course, the building was the main focus for this challenge, but more theming means more points. You've got these really nice custom towers over here with what looks like a playground, actually. Oh, that's such a good idea. Over here as well, we have the Sorcerer's Castle Scare Maze, so a permanent fixture of a Scarefest maze. That's really cool. I'm guessing there's going to be nothing inside because, yeah, fair enough. You'd enter through that door into this Scare Maze. That's a really good idea. And then, of course, the main talking point is the Lost City Coaster. As you can see, this fountain here and this massive temple-themed front entrance. That is amazing as we head through into the queue line and it's a lot of back and forths over here. Still really well themed as well. But yeah, honestly, that is mental how amazing that looks. Just look at that. Fully themed up all the way to the top. We'll go around the indoor queue line, various bits of theming once again as we head round. Lots of, uh, this is like a dinner table. And a very quick queue inside to head to the station very ominous in here i really like this so i'm not really sure on the coaster type of this but i know it's the first indoor coaster to have two launches which obviously wouldn't be a first if all the rest of them before this got built first but um this looks amazing already look at this definitely carries the theming from the outside to the inside look at that there we go little fire torches as well very well thought of even the stars up top we head round. So this is obviously a show scene. Will anything happen here? Oh! Got loads of fire. Is there anything going to happen there? Whoa, an explosion. Obviously, if this had some on-ride audio or even some narration over it and stuff, not saying that that's what you have to do in this competition, but in real life, it would just be amazing. What the hell is this? Oh, okay. <laughs> round the corner. So it's a very fast-paced coaster as well. Around we go to a little bit of an airtime hill. I can hardly see, but fair. Some thunderstorms there. Up. Oh, we had a bit of a theming piece there, but couldn't track it down. There we go. Around the inside here. To the left. Some animatronic opening mouth things and some more fire and everything. That's really cool. And we come to a stop. You did it. Obviously, not the longest ride in the world. Some of these haven't been long at all, but the theming and the experience just adds up to make it something so much better. And over to the left, we even have the transfer track as well, I believe. I, I can't see it. Where is it? So yeah, there's just loads of different props and loads of different theming structures and everything. It's just honestly such a cool experience. What did I miss up here? There he is, my boy. From inside to out, this is an absolutely amazing ride. At number three, we have Revenge of Apex by Thrillverse. This is another swinging mine train ride with a huge temple slash cave looking epicenter. Although you can't see it through the trees right now. You can kind of see it. No, you can't. We start here at the entrance of Revenge of Apex. Little car there. And we'll go through the main queue. Uh, as you can see, this has been laid down with, I think this is individual wood pieces, which is crazy fair play and it's a very long queue line as you can see uh, a lot of back and forth here some theming in the middle and even some scaffolding and crate carrying but here we go we make our way towards the main temple building i keep going up the fences but look at that that looks so cool we head through this corridor here which is really nicely lit and again really well themed into what i think is the pre-show room I, I think we've come halfway through it but this is custom made it's so cool 
The fact you've gone through the process of editing this and making it sound like a real ride pre-show is so cool. And once the pre-show is done with, we'll head over to this corridor here. There's a lot of corridors in this, but they're all very well themed. And we head through to the station yet? No, even more theming here. Wow, look at that. And now I believe we head up to the station building, as you can see. Oh, I'm getting stared down. Oh, okay. And we're about to head on the swinging mine train coaster. This station is really cool. Like the atmosphere in here, brilliant. And here we go for our ride on Revenge of Apex. If you haven't already guessed, the storyline of this is to do with the serpent god Apex and trying to not awaken it as we head through. We had some flashing lights up there. Oh, scary. And we head up this really unique circular lift hill. It's quite quite fast um, as we circle around whatever he is in the middle. And here we go, reach the top. We come face to face with the serpent. And down the drop we go. As you can see, this amazing cave right here, lit up blue and green. It looks amazing. And it's very smooth as well. And I'm also lagging a lot. Go over a vertical loop there. Very smooth. Uh, obviously, this bit on the seated view would be less outer banked and more inwards banked but I'm doing a track view because it looks better <laughs> into a brake run you can hear some more of the audio in the background and down we go there may be a few problems with the audio because even though I have most of the audio downloaded I'm pretty sure all of it it did say that there was still missing files so underneath the lava around into a launch there we go it's very well utilized within the space because it doesn't feel like we're in the project horizon building it feels like we're somewhere completely different banking round some really good elements as well it's not too unrealistic at all and we hit another break run and we enter oh look at this oh i recognize that from a universal attraction <laughs> whoa Okay, well, I didn't expect that. Airtime hill. Whoa. Oh, I thought we were going down there, but apparently not. This is really good. Come around here again. Obviously, the train would be banking back and forth. And into the final break run. There's the serpent god again. And it, it just got blown up. L for him. And one would assume we exit this way, picking up our bags, and then go to Ab Abdab's Bazaar. And we enter into a little gift shop. Oh my god, it's got Coke Freestyle machines. 10 out of 10. And we exit out the other side of where we came in, over here. And uh, exit the side of the building. Very, very good ride. So at number two, we have the ride that was so close to making it to number one. Genuinely, like I couldn't decide between the two. This is Mystery Mansion by Chrissy, or C-H-R-I-5-5-Y. And I've started back here this time because, as you can see, we've got some nice little lanterns here. And the facade, as you can see already, is insane. We're going to follow the path down. As you can see, there's a nice little building up there that has like a little path leading up to it. Very rocky and very kind of haunted got a clock tower behind the trees there and if we circle round look at that for a front entrance that is mental the amount of detail that's gone into this facade is crazy i mean i've, I've only just noticed that there's literally a screen behind that little window there and just there's so many little details it looks amazing you've got some blood splattering up there and as you can see this huge sign that says mystery ghost mansion if we head in as you can see there's an exit over there and an entrance here so let's head in as you can see, you've already got this lovely mansion-esque theme in. It's so well made. It's just all very haunted and cryptic at the same time. And we head up into what's probably one of the best theme rooms in this experience as a whole, the station building. You can see to the right, you've got a little room over there, and then to our left, just wow. Look at this. There's a massive dining table. Just, it looks insane. And as with all of these coasters so far, we will do a POV really quickly. As you know, the station building looks amazing. And we set off on our ride. That was really well timed. I'm pretty good at timing with this stuff. As you can see, loads of flashing lights. This looks good. You know what? Let's go seat view for this one because we're a little bit higher up. There we go. Some upside down clocks and stuff there. Some really nice effects and some really good lighting. And upside down chair as well. Nice. Hello. And here we go, as you can see, little drop here into some smoke. And just everywhere you look, there is theming. Like, and sound effects, apparently. What's this? It's like a library here that's all gone a bit wrong because half the bookshelves are facing outwards. You've got some flashing lights in the windows. Just honestly, everywhere I look in this ride, mental. 
down these archways here. Disorientating at the same time, but it's a very simple mechanic. Go up here. This looks like the station building. I think it's actually down there. I'm not, I'm not too sure. You can't, I can't tell you what's happening. A little demon there, some pumpkins in the wall, animatronics everywhere. The only thing I would say about this is the coaster is a little bit unrealistic if you wanted to make it in real life, but I feel like that was the whole goal with whole mystery ghost mansion. It's supposed to be more of a themed experience than anything. Oh my god, the lag. I'm getting about two frames a second. Down here, as you can see, to the left of us. I, I, I'm just, I don't know where to look. It's crazy. Little air time hill. Why, hey! And I think that's it. But you see what I mean. This coaster is, is it a coaster? I don't know. Some of the forces this ride might pull may be slightly unrealistic, but I feel like you can't take that away from the theming that's on this ride. The ratings on the coaster itself are actually fine, so technically it's it's real. And then this room here just seems to kill my computer. I genuinely opened this for the first time and was just in awe. It's crazy. And we move on to number one, the winning creation. As said multiple times throughout this video, it has been so hard to condense 120 plus submissions down to a top 20 and eventually a winner. Like, it's been so hard. But this creation, as soon as I saw the photos on the Steam Workshop page and then I loaded it up for myself, honestly, I don't think I've ever seen a creation in this game so good. And the winner of the Alton Towers Project Horizon Challenge is Bear-tastic with The Legend of Alpha Dera. I'm going to show you around now and you'll realise how insane this build is. So outside the front we have a few signs saying to download the soundtrack for the coaster, which I already have, that it's best viewed at night time and also a special thank you to BM8817 for the theme makers toolkit work. So massive shout out to you. And we turn to face Atlantis where we're going to be heading into for both the coaster and the entire area. So obviously this is an underwater theme. So this coaster inside is actually a launched Intamin Aquatrax boat ride, which I actually didn't know was a thing. So um, to hear that is uh, it's quite technical for me. But genuinely walking into the area before the coaster building just already looks insane. You've got these lovely little Atlantis themed temples and just honestly, look at this. This is a flat ride perfect fit and i don't know where they're from but these bubble effects are really cool too the theming around here is immense but now we head into the main coaster area because inside is an entire area i don't know how they managed to fit both in we come through here and we're into that is the entrance for the ride but we're going to take a look at the area first i think so round we head into atlantis i mean you can see the lag but let me just sit still for a minute I I don't think I've ever seen anything this good in this amount of space in this game. From the shaping of the buildings and the details in like the windows and the statues in front of them to the columns that are used beneath them, everything like that. And even the fact that the... Oh, it's so laggy. The fact there's coral everywhere and also the roof, it looks blue. I, I genuinely don't know how that's done, but I feel like I'm underwater. But as I said, this is a whole area. So there's even a little shop over here. Some What, what, what are they selling? some hats and up here there's some food as well which you can eat whilst you look out onto the main coaster but it's even got these indoor sections of queue line as you can see here like the windows like there was no need to do any of this theming and you have it's crazy head up again and we're into the station building now the only thing i wouldn't say is realistic about this is the fact that merlin probably couldn't afford to build this but you know what it's amazing anyway and it's going to be a very laggy pov as you can already tell by the frame rate, I wish I could do something about it, but I genuinely just can't. Here we go, up our first launch. Quite a snappy launch there. Up into the... Oh, it's not laggy. Oh, wait, it is. Round. It's just like... The coaster itself is so smooth as well. I don't think there's anything you could fault about this creation. <laughs> the frame rate. <laughs> Round the lake. There you go. And then into an airtime hill through the building. Look at that, the door opened just on time. And we're into, what is this, a little temple style theming. Oh. The door opens. See, there's no need to do any of this. It looks insane. Like, where are we now? We're underwater, there's fishes fly flying around, nice swimming around. 
Um, just honestly, it's mental. Little cracks in the walls. A turtle there. Some chests on the floor. And now we head into. There's the dragon! There's the dragon. And the ceiling's breaking above us there. Just all the little effects like that are so cool. There's the dragon again, told you. As we go down, it's just mental. Like the little water effects as well. The boulders. The See, I just, I can't. I've never seen anything like this in my life. Oh, we're slowing down a little bit. Oh, there's just a, a dragon tail in the way, and it's very, very fiery over here. Looks like we're going to have to go backwards. Oh, there he is again. Just like... Mental. That's a fast launch. So obviously this is a boat ride, but it's not a water ride. It's more of a kind of launched boat ride, if that makes sense. And there we go, into the brake run, turning down into the station. Transfer track over there. Mental. Honestly... As I keep saying, one of the best rides I think I've ever seen in this game. So yeah, Beartastic, you have won the Alton Towers Project Horizon Challenge. I will be in contact with you shortly so I can give you your prize of the £50 and the Mystery Theme Park gift box. Once again, a massive thank you to everyone for taking part in this challenge. Those of you who made the top 20 and those of you who didn't. Honestly, I've looked through them all. They're all amazing. Thank you so much. And as said, like the video if you want to see another challenge soon. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. And also, once again, congratulations to Beartastic for winning. Good night. <laughs>